bless the people, Lord. I plead your blood on this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. We're knowing God's will. Knowing God's will. Get your notebooks, pens, papers, all that stuff. <clears throat> knowing God's will. All right. Which way do we go? Right. We talked about this yesterday. And what does God say about you? That's on yesterday's video. Today, what is God like? And is he trustworthy? <clears throat> Psalms 37. Let's write that down. Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Okay. Trust in the Lord and do, and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Okay, so God meets our deepest needs when we trust him. He meets your deepest needs. He sees and knows all y'all. All right, let's look at Genesis 50, 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended for it good to accomplish the saving of many lives. So when people are cruel, and things are terrible around you, God has big plans. He can take what seems to be great evil and from it create great good. So he takes evil turns it to oh well, yeah, that means it to good. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Genesis 50 20. Genesis 50 20. Okay. All right. Let's go on to Second Chronicles twenty twelve. We have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. So the saying here: When trouble threatens, God's people need to turn their eyes and their attention to God. Okay. Praise God ahead of time for His solution. God can turn a terrible threat into a great blessing. So God can turn evil again into blessing. But you turn to God in your time of great suffering or whatever it is. 2 Chronicles 20, 12. I'll underline these so you can find them. <clears throat> okay. Um, Psalms 103, 2 through 5. Praise the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, so God forgives our sins. He heals us and redeems our lives from destruction. He did not say our lives won't have destruction. He redeems us from the destruction. Okay, he sets his love and compassion over our spirits and satisfies us with good things so that we feel as strong as soaring eagles. Okay, but God forgives our sins. God forgives And strengthens. And um, <clears throat> sometimes I spell that word wrong. It's okay. And uh, put Psalms 103, 2 through 5. Psalms 103, 2 through 5. Okay. I'm moving kind of quick here. All right. Ephesians 3, 18 through 20. It says, Now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more then all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So God is able to do more than we can ever dream through his power at work in us. Put his power, his power within us. We have to let him be there. Okay, Ephesians 3, 18 through 20. Let his power work within you. All right, Psalm 73, 21 through 24. When my heart was grieved and my spirit uh, embittered, 
I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you, yet I'm always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards, you will take me into glory. So what again is Psalm 73, 21 through 24. So again, no matter how bad things seem, God holds on to us, even when we're at our worst. So God, God always holds us, no matter what. Okay, and that is Psalm 73. 21 through 24. <clears throat> okay. Now let's take a look at um, Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Highlight that. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So even when we feel threatened or are in danger, he didn't say we'd never be threatened or be in danger, y'all. He said when you are, when you are, he holds us and makes us strong. He makes us strong. So he makes us strong. Okay, and again, that is Isaiah 41.10. Yes, that's in the Old Testament, but that don't miss the same God then as it is now, you guys. Same God. He has not changed. Okay, now let's look at John 10.10. 10. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. My sheep learn, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So Jesus promises us life at its best, an incredibly good life that lasts forever. Secure in him. Okay, so put everlasting life. Everlasting John 10, 10. <clears throat> and when he said nobody can snatch you out of his hand, don't get confused with that, y'all. And I don't need to get in a lesson on this. If you are abiding, if you gave your life to Jesus Christ, okay, and you are abiding in him, means stay there, stay there, then that's true. Nothing can snatch you out of his hand. But remember, he said, if you abide in me, if you have a choice to stay there or not stay there. OK, so nobody will snatch you. But sometimes we just jump right out of his hand. OK, it's a choice. <clears throat> All right, let's do uh, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So what it's saying here is God can bring good out of anything. And he's proven that. He's proven that he's on your side. So God can bring good out of anything. God brings good. Oops. I put how. Why am I putting how? Hold up. See, I don't edit my videos, y'all. If I mess up, I just roll with it. God brings good from bad from whatever seems bad he'll make it good Romans 8 28 <clears throat> okay now let's go on to <clears throat> what is God's will for me I'm sorry y'all what is God's will for me I hear that all the time and I tell you, we got to learn God's will, right? But I can tell you, we already know some of what God's will is for each one of us. Let's talk about it. That light, y'all. Okay. So, <clears throat> what is what the Bible says? The Bible contains many clear commands for us to follow, right? But I'm going to list you a few 
um, that refers spe specifically to doing God's will, just to get you started, okay? So it's God's will that you should be, write it down. Sanctified. This is God's will. Write that down. It's God's will for me to be sanctified. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 4 3. Write God's will on top of that <clears throat> so that you know what some of what His will is for you anyway. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. God wants us to become more like Jesus every day. In our thoughts, our words, our deeds. But he doesn't expect us to do this on our own. You want to read about that too? See Philippians 2.13. I'll put C. Philippians 2.13. Can't do it by ourselves. We have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We have to. <clears throat> okay. It's God's will. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks so joy, pray always, but always um, give thanks. Okay. <clears throat> um, in all circumstances where this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Okay. First Thessalonians. Sixteen through eighteen. Always, always, no matter what's going on in your life. Okay, God wants his children to be joyful, thankful, and prayerful people. Even when the outward circumstances seem impossible. Okay. Uh, you can also look at Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. <clears throat> Yep. Okay. Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Allergies are terrible. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Let's take a look. Uh, it's God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. So it's God's will that by doing good, to do good, okay, and <clears throat> that is 1 Peter 2.15, okay, and silence uh, foolishness, right? So there will always be people who's going to say negative things about us. We hear it every day. But only by our good actions can we prove their words to be false, so doing what is good is the best way to please God while stopping the gossip. You can also see Titus 2, 7 through 8. Okay, so do good, no matter what, in the comments section, wherever. Okay, <clears throat> um, it says in Hebrews that you need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. So we need to what? Persevere. Let me see. Press, press, press. Persevere. Okay. And that's Hebrews 10.36. Okay. Okay. So God wants us to keep going and he offers great reward to those of us that don't give up, even when life is hard. Okay, you can also see Galatians 6, 9 through 10. About that. Okay, so that's some of God's will right there, that you be sanctified, joy, pray, give thanks, do good and persevere. Okay, that is all of our, all of God's will for us, okay? So God uses suffering to call us into the peace of his presence. Okay, if God could not use pain and suffering for our good, uh, then he would not allow these kinds of things to remain in the world. Okay, 
So <clears throat> the, the, the grain of wheat must lie in the dark womb of the earth before it can be called forth into the open air by the light and the warmth of the sun. Then it grows into a heavenly plant and bears fruit. All right, God has no joy in our pain, right? But he sometimes uses pain and suffering as a bitter as bitter medicines for the treatment of our souls. Okay? Now, let's take a look at what's the value of walking through painful circumstances. What's the value in that? Okay? So, God only allows a tough time for a good purpose. Understand that. God only allows a tough time for a good purpose. So when things hurt or when experiences come that, that we can only call bad, it may not feel as though God wants the best for you at that time, right? And all the pain and anger and confusion, it's hard to remember that God loves us and values us, right? But he has great plans for you and he does not want to destroy you. Okay, so good things that can come from pain. One, we are, write this down. Let me put it on this board right here. One of the good things, say good things, good things that come from pain. God doesn't want us to have pain, but, but <laughs> what can, what can come good out of it? We get, pruned, we get pruned, okay, John 15, 2, write that down, John 15, 2. Keep these verses in your notebook, Shaw. I have a notebook of understanding. He, which is God, cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. So we are pruned like a fruit tree so we can bear more fruit. To bear more fruit. To bear, I spell that wrong, it's okay, more fruit. That's why he's teaching you, in other words, teaching you, teaching us, okay? So we, we can learn to obey God, okay? He lets us experience painful things so we can learn to obey God. Write that down. Sorry about things falling apart here. So that we can learn to learn to obey God. Okay? Some scripture for that is Psalms 119.67. Psalms 119.67. Okay, before I was afflicted, I went away. But now I obey your word. Okay, so that's one of the reasons there. The next one is in Psalms 46.1. So we can learn more about who God is. So we can learn, I'm going to drop that down, who God is. Okay, and that will be in Psalms 46.1. This is some reasons why we got this dropping down right here. I mean, it's dropping down the word learn. So we can learn to obey God. We can learn who God is. <clears throat> okay, it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Okay, so we can learn to, I'll put to rely on God. Whoops. On God. Okay, that would be 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. We can learn to rely on God. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure. 
so that we despaired even of life. They wanted death. It was so bad. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Okay? We have the opportunity to become more mature in our faith, to make us more mature, more mature in our faith. It's another reason what God teaches us from pain. Okay, James 1 4. James 1 4. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Okay, another reason is our generosity and joy during trouble can bless others. So we go through it to bless others. When they see us suffering and still relying on God and, and trusting God, well, that helps somebody else to do the same thing. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. <clears throat> okay, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Okay? And the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Okay? Let me give you an example. Sarah, Sarah worked for Josh. A harsh, demeaning man who, whose angry outbursts were heard throughout the building, right? She asked God for strength and help to let go of her anger towards uh, Josh. Ten years later, Sarah was asked to do a job for which she would not have been prepared had she not have been trained by Josh. So in hindsight, Sarah could see God's good hand in Josh being her boss, right? Sometimes God... Uh, asks us to do what we think we don't have the strength to do. God's ready, willing, and able to give us whatever we need. If we ask him, again, see Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. He'll give the strength moment by moment as we choose to trust him enough to obey him. Okay, now I'm going to stop right there. That's enough. I'm going to do it. That's 23 minutes into it. I'm going to let this upload and put out the next video. Okay, I'm going to put this on my playlist. It'll be under uh, Knowing God. That's what I'm going to call it, Knowing God. Keep your notes, y'all. Keep your notes because we're going to bring some of this up on Google Meets throughout class. And so that you'll know where the scripture is. We should have, a new, those of you that have been coming for a while, should have. you should be on like your fourth or fifth notebook by now. You should have a notebook. With God's will, speaking God's word, qualities of a Christian, forgiving others, return of Jesus, the names of God, faith, spiritual warfare, answer prayers, prayers for unsaved loved ones, security, spiritual maturity, doubt, when nothing goes right, obedience, the Holy Spirit, God's faithfulness, encouragement, forgiving others, uh, grieving the spirit of God, of guilt. We, we, got, we go on and on, and there's like, I don't remember, 20 scriptures for each one of these categories. So you have a category that's listed on your notebook, God's will. Scripture, just like this, all over the place. Okay, you have a notebook of understanding. It's very important, y'all, to do your part. Write it down. Write it down. Okay, there's a lot of God's will right here for you. Right here. Okay? So as you get to know God, and you get to know him like this enough to trust him and obey him, and you're doing it, Okay, then you'll find out what his will is for you in other areas. But first is to know God's will. All right, be looking for the next video. It'll be God's will. Okay, I'll be spitting them out today. All right, I'll see y'all at Google Meets tomorrow night, which will be Saturday night. We have military nurse Tara coming on, uh, giving you very important updated information about the jab. You don't want to miss it. 
We can't talk about it here. We talk about it there. And we pretty much just talk about it on Saturday nights because we don't focus on that. We focus on God because that's where our strength's coming from. That right there. All right, if you don't know Jesus, ask him to save you um, and, and just fill you up with the Holy Spirit. Now get in his word because that's where he's at. That's where he's at. He's around you all the time. He's in you. You understand? So he's always with you. All right. Thanks some of you for what you've done. Anything you need to know is in the description on a video or you can go to the website, jesusdoers.com. Now there's also things on jesusdoers.com that you'll see in the world news tab that we can't talk about here. If you can't make Google Meets, go check out the world news tab on jesusdoers.com. Okay, and also look at what God has told us to do in Africa. So when you help this ministry, you're helping Africa too. Okay, so thank you all so much for helping the kingdom of God and doing God's will with that. All right, in Jesus name, God bless y'all. I'll be looking for the videos they are coming out today.